take four. Roy Barnes, the wildlife man. G'day guys and girls and welcome to another enthralling episode from my channel. Nothing too much happening today, but I'm enjoying a bottle of Yellow Glen Brut Cuvée Yellow Sparkling Wine. And basically just chilling back and enjoying a quiet Sunday. Uh, nothing much to report really. Uh, in the next couple of days I'm expecting a small package from Garage Project, which are a New Zealand uh, brewing company based in Arrow Street in Wellington. Uh, they obviously have a, uh, a, a branch over here in Australia and responding to my online review uh, of one of their beers recently and an email that I sent to them congratulating them on the quality of that product, the absolute stunning quality of that product. They've decided to send me um, a, a small package of some beers which I shall review in due course. So that's an interesting little outcome and I'm very grateful to them uh, for reaching out and uh, giving me the chance the chance to, uh, to taste some of their Stunning brews. There is one of their stouts I would love to try. I think it's up 12, 13 uh, percent, an imperial stout or porter. Uh, looks absolutely brilliant. I've also got some uh, Mudgy Mud ordered, which is, uh, as anybody should know, my number one rated beer, stout, porter in the world at this point in time. I love this stuff. It's not overly expensive, um, and the quality of that product is stunning. Uh, yesterday, I came back from my um, walk, overnight field trip at Tunks Ridge, um, in which I took some, um, some pictures of some animals. And I'm going to show you this picture here of a... Uh, red spider mite. Now this is a very small animal um, that uh, is common and is considered a pest uh, in many parts of the world for its so-called destructive uh, actions against uh, cultivated plants. Uh, but when you see this animal through the magnification of a macro lens, it really is quite an, an interesting animal to uh, to, sh to look at. Uh, it belongs to Arak Nida, the class, uh, the class of animals uh, which also contains the Arrhenii or the spiders. Uh, this is the first uh, um, animal in this particular group, uh, the mites, that I've come across and been able to photograph. It's a small animal, a very, very small animal, uh, but it's not microscopic. Uh, and this lens on this occasion seemed to do a very good job of uh, capturing this particular little beast. Uh, it has the qualities of a spider. In fact, it's almost like a little red tarantula. If you look at this, the structure of the legs, uh, it's quite an interesting little animal to behold. So I was very lucky to capture that particular one. And as I was ending my walk in the evening, just before retiring to the tent, I came across this ant. And this particular ant is quite a large ant. I think it's classified as a bull ant. Um, I've also heard that it might be a honey ant. Uh, it was by itself. It was sitting on a rock minding its own business. I sat down with it and had a bit of a talk to it, as I tend to do. Uh, and uh, quickly realized that it was gonna be an interesting animal to, to, to photograph. So I took a couple of shots uh, from above uh, and in order to, to, you know, to capture its entire body. Um, and then I realized that it was cooperative and it presented as an opportunity to get a front on view. And this is the result. Uh, I have since uh, cropped it on my iPhone 
so that it really is just that face, that front on the image. And it really is a stunning uh, creature. It really is the most beautiful ant's face I think I've ever seen. Um, but this is the nature of animal photography because a lot, so many people, most of us, uh, look at insects as pests, as something that's an irritant, something to be got rid of, something that's not desirable to have around us. Um, and yet if you take the time, if you just reach out and for, for some moment in time occupy or coexist with them in their space, you start to understand the beauty and the integrity and the majesty of these little animals. Um, they really, really are something special. And when you consider the variety of them and the, the huge, infinite range of forms that insects take and the complicated lifestyles that they live, you really seem, you see, you start to understand their importance in the world and their importance, their importance and their place in nature. And then hopefully you stop being less, you know, you stop being so destructive of their environment and of them directly. I've been interested in animals, I think since the late, all my life, um, but particularly since the 1980s, the early 80s, um, when I really started studying them, you know, on an ongoing uh, basis and I learned the orders and the nomenclature of their taxonomy fairly, fairly, you know, fairly quickly. Um, but I didn't get into the photography of them seriously until I bought a macro lens, uh, a real macro lens, uh, ooh, maybe 10, 11, 12 years ago. And that's when I started to really get down to their level and really start to get into their world. And that's when my database and that's when my collection of animals really to start to, started to take off. And because it's tax, taxonomically based, I'm able to put each of my images in a specific scientifically based place. Um, so I can see the, the broader picture broader evolutionary spectrum, if you like. <clears throat> it's quite interesting. It's a really interesting, it's an ongoing project and it's one that's constantly being revised uh, and modified as I get more pictures. And I work with uh, you know, some a lot of specialists and the Australian Museum and these are very helpful in giving me feedback um, in, that, in that identification process. One insect I am uh, or sort of proud to have taken the photograph of, and it in intrigues me now. It was a what's called a uh, I've forgotten what the name of it is. It's a uh, braconid wasp, and it's a particular kind of wasp with a particular kind of shape. And it's hard for me to describe it now, but this particular one, and, and most of them are brown and a lot of them have yellow eyes, but this particular one had white eyes. And I, I went through all the, the literature, I went through all the stuff online trying to identify this one. So I sent it off to the museum. They got their entomological experts to have a look at it. They consulted all the literature, they consulted all the online databases and groups that, that deal with the identification of insects. They, were, they drew a blank. They were not able to, um, to identify this particular species. So it's, it's, it stands at the moment as an unidentified species um, that I've taken. And I like to think that perhaps in all the, the database that I've produced, um, there are there are insects there that have never been seen or photographed or described, scientifically described before. So it's really quite a fascinating thing to do.
and we're lucky in Sydney you can get in your car and within 15 20 minutes be in the bush be away from people and there are still plenty of animals um, and insects um, birds whatever to photograph uh, and to learn about uh, it's really interesting and I mean I I go a lot to the Lane Cove National Park area um, and, and photograph there and over the years you know I've come across most of the species that, that are sort of prevalent in that area. And I go there now and I'm basically just adding duplicates or, or re-photographing animals I've already already captured. So Tunks Ridge has been interesting because I've been there maybe four times now. And each time I've gone, I've come across new insects um, that I haven't seen before, new uh, behaviorisms that I haven't photographed before. Uh, so that's really quite, really quite exciting to go into a new area that's, that's not too far away from, from those that you already uh, frequent and to come across new species and to get some new observations uh, in. It's, it's, it's fascinating, but it's a great process. It's a great hobby, it's a great pastime. And who knows, one day I might you know, be able to to pass on my collection and my database to the Australian Museum and say, look, you know, here's this that I've put together, and maybe it'll add to the the wider the wider um, bank of knowledge that's out there. It's interesting. Oh well, folks, I've done enough yattering and nattering. I'm going to go and see how the missus is. She's lying in bed with a bit of a vi flu or virus or something at the moment with the cat. And uh, I shall wish you all a good afternoon and uh, a good week ahead. Bye.